Hey YouTube, happy Movember. In case you're not aware, November is the month that you get to grow a mustache and people can donate to your cause and it goes towards men's prostate cancer. All the money, all the funds go towards the research for men's prostate cancer. So I think it's a pretty cool cause and you get to rock a sweet mustache for the month. If any of you guys are growing a sweet mustache, post it on Instagram, tag at Royal Canadian Reptiles. I wanna see them all. This week we're gonna talk about how we pick our pairings. Uh, I get asked this question all the time, and it's how do you pick a project, what snap's going to look cool together, what doesn't work together, what do you think I should do? Uh, we've narrowed it down into a five-step process. We're going to take a look at that right now. Also, stick around to the very end, we're going to give you an update on our new facility. Uh, this week I wanted to talk to you about how we go about picking our pairings. Uh, it's a question I get asked quite a bit. How, how do you determine, you know, which, which male to put to which female and, and at what time? And I mean, this isn't going to be a video about how to breed, but a video about how we choose which genes we want to put together and how we pick a project and how we focus on on one specific project or two or three specific projects and build around those specific ones. Uh, so there's five steps that we, we go through. And number one has, for us, has always been uh, breed for the future. It's, it, you can't, if you are always breeding, trying to catch somebody or trying to make something for, for you right now, it never works. I always want to make stuff that I want to use in three years and four years and five years. Uh, obviously, I wish I could use them right away, but that's just not the case. So what we do is I never breed a recessive female to her uh, male counterpart recessive. Uh, what I mean by that is I would never breed a pied to a pied, or I would never breed even a male het pied to a female pied. Now, just because I do that doesn't mean you guys shouldn't. Uh, it, the way I think is, I think that all of my recessive girls better suit me to put uh, recessive other recessive males to. So, for example, let's say let's say we have a fire clown. We have a fire clown here. Uh, the fire clown, I wouldn't put a orange dream hat clown to it simply because. Yeah, I mean, Orange Dream Fire Clowns are awesome, but what I'm really looking for is like, let's say, an Orange Dream Desert Ghost. Okay, now you're really talking. That's what gets me excited, is the double recessives, stacking genes on top of those double recessives, and how we can further those projects. So I never breed, um, I never breed two, two recessives together. Not, not pied to pied or clown to clown, I would never do that. Pied to clown, yes. Clown to pied, yes. Puzzle to pied, puzzle to clown. You know, the rec double recessives, triple recessives, start to stack those genes. Um, the way I make the clown combos and the pied combos and the puzzle combos, I sort of take a long route. And maybe it, I might be shooting myself in the foot, uh, but I always, 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 always breed, make the hets by the male or have the male or produce the male, however you get obtain that mail, start to make your hats. In the meantime, uh, I would, I would take, let's, let's use puzzle for an example. I should have been producing puzzles now for a long time. I've had the project for seven years, something like that. That project for seven years now, and I've had breeder sized females for four or five of that. Uh, and I have not ever bred puzzle to puzzle. It's just not my thing. What I did was I took my male puzzle, started breeding it to all my co-dominant stuff. Uh, so your orange dreams, your yellow bellies, your enchies, your ivories, all that sort of stuff. I bred it into all those girls and kept all of the het females. So now I actually have, right behind you guys, I've got 20 or so combo het puzzle females that are raising up. So when the time comes, they're big and I have a puzzle male, or combo puzzle male by that point, and I put my combo puzzle male 
to the het females. But with my puzzle girls, I think they're too valuable for me to just make puzzles with. So I put my combo clown males and my combo desert ghost males and, and all the other combo stuff into the puzzles. And now I'm also raising up a whole bunch of double hat puzzle, desert ghost, puzzle hat clown. This year, hopefully, we're hoping to hit the uh, the puzzle clown and the desert ghost puzzle um, with a couple gene, a couple other genes thrown in there. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I think it's going to be a great project. Uh, so that's number one. Always breeding for the future. is to always have a focused vision. So what I mean by that is to, to, to focus your collection on something that you really like. So if you really are into clowns or you're really into genetic stripes, awesome, that's great. So you're really into genetic stripes, start to focus your collection towards that specific gene or at least a portion of your collection to that specific gene. I see too many people all over the place with no real direction. They're not, they're, so with us, we I I'm, do pairings so that if I hit on this clutch and I hit on this clutch, they can go back together. But it's not sort of all over the place. It's very focused and I'm very organized with how I do it. I have a very specific plan and I'm trying to stick to it. Uh, don't be all over the place making, you know, tons of codoms here and codoms there. And, and then at the end of the day, you're just uh, sort of sitting there going like, well, I don't really know what I want to do. Have a project. Maybe pick two or three double recessives that you really like, whether it's Desert Ghost, um, Genetic Stripe, Dreamsicles, Clown Pies, whatever the case may be, and start to build your collection around those things. Uh, you're, you're obviously still seeing all the different clown stuff that's coming out, and still, to this day, Pied's been around for 20 years, all the different pie combos that are coming out. You put clown and Pied together, you have an entirely new, a, an entirely new platform to create combos with. And it's a, it's a project that's going to hold its value very well because they're not easy to make. It's a project that, that you will, if you start to crank out some, some clown pied combos, you will be pretty well one of the only guys doing it. And, uh, and you really have the opportunity there to go your own direction with that, in, that whole palette of stuff. has been, if you've wanted to make a specific combo, look at ways to make it better. What I mean by that, so for me, Justin Kubelka this year produced the uh, chocolate pastel clown and it knocked, it blew my socks away. I was sort of like, holy smokes, like that thing is so like, it's rich, it's bright, it's like the, the, the drips coming off the side. I just love that snake. I think it was awesome. Um, so that snake really caught my eye. And I started thinking to myself like, okay, I don't have, I have pastel in clown, but I don't have chocolate in clown. And how do I get chocolate into clown and produce that snake that it, it's gonna take me a few years to get there. So I started to think, how could, I, how could I produce something like that, but have another element on top of that? So I have a chocolate, a chocolate Enchi Desert Ghost Mail. Now I'm pairing him to pastel clowns. Now, obviously if you guys have watched my other videos, you know I'm big into the Desert Ghost clown stuff. So it's sort of a natural progression. I think Desert Ghost will make that chocolate pastel, a pastel chocolate clown that much better. And so that's what I mean when I say, take a combo and look at ways to make it better. Not saying it's the combo is not great how it is. I, I love that animal. But I think that in three to four years that it's gonna take me to get to it, uh, I might as well put some focus into having some extra things in there and having it make it make it pop just that much more. Uh, I think the chocolate clown stuff, great direction to go. Uh, darker stuff into clown is something that's just starting to be played with now. Um, so I, I really think that that's a, a great way to go. But look for a way to make it better if it's gonna take you four years or three years to make it.
create your own projects. You have to pick something and stick to it. You, you get to really pick a project and then if you really like something, so for example, I love the Desert Ghost Clowns. Let's just, let's use those as an example. Use those as an example. The Desert Ghost Clown has so much potential for me to add a ton of different genes. Just look at what's in Clown. All I have to do is just to start popping other things in, see what works with, with what. And I use that specific project, the Desert Ghost Clown as the base, and I start to add my own things into it. Now somebody else working with Desert Ghost Clown might be adding other things into it, but you're making it your own. You're, you're doing your own thing. So for example, like what Justin did with the Batman. When people see the Batman, they know Justin. They, like it just pops to your head. And I think that's what you should do. The Orange Dream, Aussie Boys, right away. You have to continuously create your own brand and your own project and, and really work on it that way. way too often is people giving up. You know, you've made these double hats, you've done all this work, you've you've raised the babies, you've, you say you Azantic clown. You raised you bought an Azantic and you bought a clown, you raised them up, you bred them together, you raised them up, you bred them together, and you don't get your Azantic clown. And I've seen way too many people give up on their double recessive projects because they don't hit it the first shot or they don't hit it within 16 eggs. It's a 1 in 16 chance, but that's per egg. It doesn't mean that 16 eggs you're going to get one. It means that if you took a roulette wheel and there was 16 numbers on it and you took a little ball, pick a number. Number 16 is your double recessive. Spin that ball. It has to land on 16. So it's not, I got 16 eggs, I should get one. No, it's a 1 in 16 chance per egg. Um, so just don't give up on your projects, guys. It's It's something that I see a lot of people doing and it's really unfortunate. I think if you guys just really stick to it, you, you will get there. Uh, that's pretty much it from us. Um, hope everyone's having a great breeding season. Uh, stick around, we're gonna show you a quick little uh, update on our facility. So let's take a look at that now. Uh, also, don't forget, hit the like button, share the video, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, do what you have to do. We really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us and uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Hey guys, just wanted to give everybody an update on the building. Roof is on, just need to throw the siding on. The uh, spray-in insulation is up already up in, the, up in the roof there. Let's come on right in. All right, that, what you're looking at right there is our incubator. So here we are in the incubator. Lots and lots and lots of space. From the incubator back, we're gonna have, this is all gonna be hatchlings, all along uh, this wall here and this wall here, all hatchling racks. There will be, this wall will continue over across like this. There'll be a door right here. In this space, up until that door, this is all adults. And then through here is going to be sub-adults. It's coming along pretty nicely. I uh, just got to do a little bit more, a little bit more work, pop up a couple more walls and uh, we should be able to drywall. Nice thing about the, uh, the building is the ICF. So even it's not even heated in here right now and it's pretty warm. Uh, it's just so well insulated. We did the black concrete floors, which still need to be epoxied. Um, there is uh, in-floor heating, so that's all running through the entire floor. Uh, it's coming along, so we'll keep you guys updated. Thanks a lot.